Welcome uh, to the presentation about the MBS FileMaker plugin. And because I don't want to show everything, uh, I thought okay. about making a little uh, presentation about what changed since well, the last fall. So let's take a look on what changed in 7.5 version of the plugin. Like the nice idea to run command line tools from the plugin and not just run them, but also pass uh, parameters and get back the text those tools output. So you can run the admin tool from the FileMaker server and get the result with all the output it shows and then use that output in your scripts. And we use it in a lot of ways, like uh, using FFmpeg to transcode video files in the background parallel, so you can run several instances of FFmpeg or zip files or whatever you like. FFmpeg or migration. Sure. Uh, then we had the idea to show the layout ideas, uh, IDs in the layout dialog uh, window. First you can turn it on on the Mac and the plugin will add this extra column. As you may know, we have regular expressions in the plugins and new in that version were search and replacing text. So you can uh, have a big chunk of text and search all maybe five digit numbers and put them in quotes. next thing I did for a company is to replace pictures in a PDF file. So for a uh, company selling houses, they have the standard leaflet uh, with four pictures of houses and there's a placeholder picture. We replace a placeholder picture with the extra picture. And uh, the text below we can replace too, but the picture replacement is good. Then, uh, few more smaller things like I started making trial licenses and if you if you replace text in word files you can now append your one word file to another word file. Then we got the JavaScript and co-location functions to work on iOS so you can run JavaScript without a web viewer and you can query um, the coordinates for an address and also the address for the coordinates. <laughs> That's the JavaScript engine from Apple. Oh. No idea what the name is. <laughs> um, then we have uh, the SFTP functions uh, for FileMaker Cloud, which can be very useful to well, upload files from one cloud computer to another cloud computer. Our OCR functions cannot just get the text, but you can put it in number only mode. So if you know the thing you want to read is, is a number, it will not give you an I or an O or zero. And the JSON functions in MBS plugin have been upgraded to handle 64-bit numbers correctly. And further to this, I also um, made them handle really big numbers, like UIDs as numbers correct. So they are not changed to scientific notations like some other JSON functions. So version 8, we got this nice search panel for searching text in a calculation or in a custom function. So if you are editing text there, you just press Command F and you get the search panel. For iOS, I upgraded a few functions, like you can use all the PDF kit functions to merge PDFs on the device. You can export videos in different formats. So you can record, uh, record a video on the device and then make a smaller version to trim it maybe, to upload it somewhere. The CG image source functions allow you to read uh, a lot of different image formats and get the metadata like EXIF and uh, IPTC. It also allows you to read the new HI, the new image format from Apple, like, uh, or you call it. Um, and also we got the clipboard functions to work on iOS and for the events database, uh, you can now um, do 
to calendar items and reminders. So you can read them, write them, add them to the user database um, on iOS. And if you need a QR code like this for Switzerland for payments, you can do that in the plugin too. Yeah, the plugin supports over a hundred different types of barcodes. So if you need a barcode, yeah, we have it. Next thing, um, you can use the Spotlight search engine to search items on your computer. So you can, for example, search music files by artist. On Windows, we can handle the domains with international mm -hmm. characters, like umlauts, which on the Mac should work by the system already. Then for writing and reading Excel files, we can now batch read cells or batch write cells, so you can send a list of uh, text to the plugin to write a thousand cells in, in one call. Also you can read uh, a range of cells as, as a big list. Then uh, we got the CSV import, so you can pass some text to the plugin and we split it automatically and detect whether it's comma or semicolon. And put it in fields for text and number fields. And the JavaScript message handler allows you to call back to FileMaker from a JavaScript in a web viewer in FileMaker 16 on Mac. You may have noticed that FileMaker switched from WebKit 1 to version 2, which broke a lot of plugin functions, and now we got our callback back. For LDAP, we can now run queries, uh, well, we can run queries already, but we got a new function to return the result as JSON and also create records on your LDAP server or on Active Directory by sending JSON. So this makes it much easier to well, create people with a block of data. <coughs> then in March, we had version 8.1, and new here is uh, the drag and drop for Windows. So we had it for years on Mac already, and now we can also drag and drop files directly from, from the Explorer or even from applications like Outlook to FileMaker, and you get uh, a script triggered where you can get the file pass or for files which are transferred in memory, like the ones from Outlook, you get it as a container value and can put it in a container. Very nice, yeah. Is it just multi-branded Yeah. What's wrong with FileMaker? Well, for FileMaker, you can only drop um, a file on a container if it's a real file. So on Mac, for example, with a Photos application, you can't drag files because the Photos application provides them on demand. So you first receive it and then ask the system, please give me the, the data, and then the photo application will serve the data. Same on Windows with Outlook, so FileMaker can't receive those tracks, and we can. Also, you can just drop in 20 files, and then you get a list of 25 files. As well. And um, I got a function to create a WebKit 1 web view on Mac, on a layout or on a popover. And this web view lives outside of FileMaker, so you can switch records and the web view is not reloading. Yeah. So it's very nice for doing layout things, uh, like a menu for navigation. And we can put as many, uh, as many web viewers as you want on a popover, not just one. And a lot of other nice things, like this is still an old style web view, so it can print and you can make a PDF and a few other things, which you can't do on the on the WebKit 2 version. Cool. And you got a few more things, like XML validation. So if you have a schema and you have an XML file, you can validate whether the file is correct. The PHP functions got improved with Proper error messages. There's only XML validate, is it Boolean? No, it's a 
it's a function which gives you either OK or a list of error messages. From the XML engine. The plugin just calls the C library, and whatever it complains about, you get the errors. Is it file manager? The XML engine? No, no, uh, the libxml2, which I use on the plugin for all the XML work. So next thing, um, Java got a new version, 9, and I think 10 is coming, and I keep the plugin updated so it can load Java if you want to use Java classes. And I got a new function, set up AVS, to set up requests to Amazon Web Services. And we have an example for Amazon S3, but it works also for other web services, because we just do the, the signing of the request um, and one user is using it with a Dell DCS service, so it seems to work universally. And if you have a touch bar, we can block the escape key. So you have to press option escape to actually get an escape. Which is a funny thing because, well, the touch bar, it's easy to hit an escape key if you are editing a custom function and all your edits are lost. Then version 8.2, there was a new firmware -like release and I had to fix quite a few things over the, the time. So I got a uh, better last year and then fixed things and things. And I thought 8.1 would work perfectly until they fixed, they changed another thing. And so 8.2 is the version for FileMaker 17. And it got also a few functions for HealthKit. So if you're making your great solution for iOS, you can now get authorization for asking the user's sex or blood type, or query their step counts, or how much they climbed today. So you can use all the health data in your solution. And if you want to make some money, can even sell your iOS solution. So you can offer in-app pur in purchases and you can query your products, show products, and you can even ask the user to review your application on the iOS App Store. Please rate me. <laughs> Next, um, FileMaker uses the standard table view from Apple, and I was very happy to apply the search function from the text areas to also work on the lists. So in somewhere like 20 lists in FileMaker, we now can offer the search feature. So you have the list there, you press Command F, you get the search bar. And you can search all your fields, all your accounts, if you've got a big foreign table that you've never seen before and you want to find the serial number for it, it's very easy. You can search for serial and find the serial number. And then um, we have the idea to make a loop function. So you may know in a lot of programming languages you have a for loop construct where we count from one number to another number and do some steps in between. So this is more or less making a for loop in one call. So you pass in a variable, we count up from start value to an end value with a given step, and we evaluate on each step the given formula, which works very nice, and is, is maybe easier than developing a recursion. And you may not run into some limits of the FileMaker's uh, evaluation. Because here we evaluate uh, each, each express, expression on its own. So if you return some values, you can return megabytes of data. And you can run it a million times if you want. And for your columns, I got a little bit extra space. So for a few dialogues, like the layout dialogue and the uh, field definition dialogue, you can uh, get, you can resize your columns, and then the plugin will remember this in the 
file, make a preference file, and when you open the dialog again, the column should be on the size you selected. Page time has to be. Is there auto-size now, or? No, no, it's not auto-size. Um, Yeah, the, the key thing is that FileMaker doesn't care about storing the width mm -hmm. you set. It doesn't remember it. Uh, the plugin now remembers it. But you only set slides manually. Yeah, you set it once manually or you double click. It doesn't matter. Double click works here. Isn't that a standard feature? It works in I think I think double click does work on. Well, the key thing is. Map, but the important thing is that with the plugin, it now remembers it. So you don't have to do it every time. But except for custom functions, can edit custom functions. Yeah, maybe. And in Python, if you have option and double click, it will do all the rows across. Oh, all that's the new. Yeah, I don't know. Oh. But that that is brilliant. And if anybody who has field names or table names go over that. <laughs> it's yeah. a godsend. Great. Okay, so we have next thing we have is a little bit color for JSON and XML. So if you show XML to the user, you can now give it a little bit color, so they can read it much easier. Not by date. What? Is that something by date? Oh, we have another function for that. Okay. But we come come there later. I also got a function to convert JSON to HTML for easy viewing to a user who doesn't want to see the, the brackets. So it will create an HTML table uh, of the HTML file and give it this alternate coloring and you can change a few options. Of course, if you make a really big JSON, it will be an ugly table with a lot of subtables. <laughs> And we got more in this release, like the rich text functions for iOS, so you can use formatted text with the plugin. We got the functions for the UID as numbers, so you can create them in older FileMaker versions or convert from one, uh, one representation to the other. We got a function to do some statistics on a table to report you how many containers are in a table, what do they contain, how many uh, number of values, how many ticks, or how many empty cells. <laughs> Stuff like this, and a few uh, numbers on how much text, so you can get a raw idea how big this table is. We got over 50 new curve options, so FileMaker may have 50. <laughs> we just added 50. <laughs> uh, we got a site license option for big companies, um, and uh, for the clipboard function to uh, get you style text or HTML, they can now convert between uh, both on Mac. So if you copied style text, you can query it as HTML. And now we're working on 8.3 for July, for next month. And we've got a function. Can I request a feature? Sure. Um, in the they would set preference to never face formatted text. Say again? To never face. Just like you do uh, ah, you want the Yeah. Yeah, okay. but you can already set preferences with a plugin, so. No, only set preferences. There is a preferences.setValue function on Mac and the registry functions on Windows, which can already set. In the system. Yeah, for file maker. For maker. Yeah. Look at the documentation. <laughs> I mean, uh, I had this question this morning about the um, advanced tools checkbox. And you can query the state with the plugin or set it if you want. All right. So that's uh, what, what you want is uh, paste into the field. Yeah, but to strip all the um, data from it. Um, so the override right command being. You can do that, you can do that with custom menus. Yeah, that's the way I do it now. Say what you want. 
I saw it. Is it is so that you turn the uh, pasting of formatting off completely so you don't have to. Okay, so after we uh, got uh, the formatting for XMN and JSON to tidy it up, and we got the color, the next question was to add line numbers for showing it. So, yes, because it works for any text to add the line numbers and it preserves the existing formatting. So we can first color it, uh, so we get the JSON, we first format it, then we color it, and then we add line numbers. And you can, uh, of course, define the color for the line numbers and whatever colors you have on your existing text, we but preserve those. Those lines go up HTML and then executes, and then you substitute for existing variables, and then paste the HTML text, and then you will not be able to see R, you can have a raw HTML page to read it properly. Yeah. So then for graphics magic, I added an example on how to make gradients, like the one on the right. And for Mac, I already upgraded graphics magic to use 16-bit per channel. So you can really edit pictures with high color ranges. Then for the image picker uh, on, on the iPhone, we got a function to add an overlay picture so you can show a frame or show some instructions on the on the layout while taking pictures. Um, then we have a website, we have some videos, a blog, and you can of course um, follow me on Twitter. Is that right that one of the, one of the URLs has got no minus in it and the other one has? Yes, I got a lot of domains over time. And it's the one. Okay. So let let me show you a few things. The black thing is still white. Yeah, sure. So here's uh, the coloring feature. So I can change here the text. Oops. Let me just make it an array for you. So, yeah, that's that's a feature of the formatting, and the whole thing is defined here in the calculation. So we add the line numbers, we colorize, we format all in one run, and here we define. Oh, I launched it in German. Okay, so this text color, text font. <coughs> And we have here the color for the for the line numbers, and I just change it a bit. And here we have the separator, so let's make it a bigger sign. And now we have to trigger it, and we get it in red. You see? So you can all dry that. And then there's something new I made um, in the last days. And now I need my cable for the, for the iPhone. So if you want to, to really make uh, your image management in uh, FileMaker, you can get pictures from the iPhone into FileMaker directly. I will make a live demonstration. Usually it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. The picture is there. So I uh, we connect and I got a camera and a picture of the camera here, picture of the iPhone, and I can say import and I got pictures. And there is a picture, and now I say download and that's the oh. picture. So I get uh, I can query all the pictures on the device. Uh, like like the picture name, the type, uh, and here's some metadata. So let's 
copy and show you. That's all the metadata I, I get. Which, well, all the EXIF stuff, um, <coughs> Apple's stuff, and here uh, some more GPS coordinates, so you can create all those metadata. There can also be user data, but this is empty. We get the file size, we got a thumbnail, and then for each picture we can download it, and of course we can delete it. And if it's a supported camera, which has a capability to take pictures, automatically we can also press the take picture button. But this doesn't work with an iPhone, because you actually have to point it somewhere. <laughs> so I can show you a script. Let me just restart in English. As you may know, we got a few nice buttons here. So we, we query for the devices of type camera. We may get, find one or not. We get the first ID, we open the device. We can ask some information like for name or the capabilities. And here we even get a, an icon and then the device is opened. And to get the picture, uh, we ask the function called media files, which gives us a big JSON with all the data of all the pictures on the device. And then I can go Is for the names or also the thumbnails. No, the thumbnails are not included because there's an extra function for that. But you get all the metadata and names, uh, so you can filter the list. And then for those who we were maybe uh, you may filter the list for getting which pictures are new. And uh, then you can here check uh, the thumbnail of the picture and the plugin will go and ask for thumbnail. It may take a few milliseconds to download the thumbnail. And the, this is only for Mac currently. Um, and here is a function which requests to download a certain file from the, from the, from the camera. And then it's downloaded in the temporary folder and we can read it in. Sorry. This is Apple's image capture framework in use. Uh, technically, I could make it for Windows too, of course, I will. we'll see, if someone wants that. So this is image capture, so, and then we have another example here, which makes personalized PDFs. So this is uh, the view of the admin, which sees all the original containers. So we have here blue, red, red and green. And the normal user, these a container like this. So we have here a username, like, like other. And then if you go to a record, uh, you see we create um, a new PDF based on the existing one but put on your name and page numbers. And if you bought a license, we wouldn't get a watermark. Um, so this is for, for one client, there's a database where people can download PDFs and, and read PDFs, but they don't want to give everyone the original PDF, but want to get a version which is a little bit watermarked. So you know who leaked the PDF, if you found the PDF. And with the plugin, we can put the name there visible. We can also put information in the PDF which you don't see. Okay. Is that a, a like a search and replace within, um, the, within, the, within the PDF, or does the PDF have to be constructed in a particular way? No, it's, it's just taking existing PDF here. Uh, this is when, when loading the record, mm -hmm. we have uh, a normal field with a, the original PDF and a global field for yeah. your personal copy. And so we, we we import all the PDF pages from the existing PDF and then we do some manipulation. Like here we edit each page and set a font and write a text on it. And then uh, we close the page, we save it to the container. 
And it's so fast that even if it's a thousand page PDF, you yeah. don't notice the speed difference. Yeah. It's amazing. Any questions? And then I got another thing, an example for the use of the new setup OOS function I made, which allows you to well, create a request for a web service using open authentication, like for example, Twitter, Facebook, Magento, and a few others. And so we have a function where you pass in your, your keys and what kind of request and the URL, additional headers, values to include in the signature, and then we send it to the server and get back the result. And for this example here, it did work a few days ago when I tested it with my, uh, yeah, my keys. <laughs> you have to sign up yourself as a developer with Twitter to get your own. And then here is a send message, so we can actually make a, a Twitter post from the, from the Maker solution. But just an example because the function is, is, uni is universal, you can sign any request using open authentication if you have the keys and all the data to sign. And this is a nice example uh, someone made who is not in the room, I think. Um, so we show a card window and the card window is there and we can press the escape key to hide it or when we show one we can click on the on the outer side and it disappears. This is done using MBS plugin functions. So again let's zoom in. So we use our event monitor functions <coughs> where the plugin um, Stores an event monitor which watches all your mouse clicks within FileMaker, so we can filter them and can detect this click outside without uh, modifying all the windows in FileMaker. So we tell the plugin that there is a card window on a given window with given coordinates, and there's a script to trigger, which is uh, get file name and two. So the, the name of the oh, yeah. name of the parent window. Yes, well, the name. Of the parent window, but it's, it's, a, it's a event handler on the main window. Which yeah, they of course. Pick up everything around yeah. the. Yeah, and also we define here um, uh, escape key hotkey yeah. for for triggering the same the same script, which is here given by ID, which just confused me. But if you look here. We have the column to show the IDs, and so here number two is on window close, which well it closes the pop over uh, and uh, removes the event monitor and the hotkey. So, but we do have a lot of SQL functions called within FileMaker, like if you want to insert a record in a different table or you. Want update the record in a table without switching layouts. Mm -hmm. You can do that with our SQL commands. Mm -hmm. That's been in there for a long time. Yes. All, here. all these FileMaker SQL commands. Um, so if you need to insert a record, you can just pass in file name, table name, the fields, uh, as many as you want. And the plugin will just create the record without a layout switch makes it quite fast. Or if you need to update a record, uh, you need to provide an ID field, but uh, then we can locate the record and update one field. Well, if you want to perform JavaScript in a web view, you can do that already. What's the problem? No, in a web view. Yeah, yeah web view, and then here you go to run JavaScript, um, then you can run JavaScript in a web viewer. Mm -hmm. okay. But if you said you could run JavaScript without a web viewer? Yes, without is possible, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, what side of the question? Let's say, I'm, I'm looking to get away from web view and let's uh, say perform JavaScript. Yeah, but, but the next problem is usually when you get JavaScript, the JavaScript expects to have all this stuff from the browser around. Like if you run JavaScript without WebView, there is no document, there is no window object. This uses the Apple JavaScript engine, yeah. If, if you use a WebView, uh, it loads the same framework and then, of course, um, populates the JavaScript uh, Object mem environment, yeah, with, with all those objects, and so we, we used that in the past for um, well using JavaScript to do some calculations like um, a hash for for web service or do some math there, which which may run quicker than a file maker, and and you can even call back from JavaScript to to a uh, file maker. I just want to play. <laughs> so you can just execute something here, uh, like uh, here. Add first name and last name and see what what you get. <laughs> yeah, you can search, but you can't. Uh, you can only search one one script. Yeah. Sure. Maybe. Well, if you don't have, don't have any other questions, so thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you.